everybody, welcome back to Don 10. We've been having a lot of fun with this Black Luffy list. Man, it's been a blast. Here we've got a matchup against Bello Betty, and boy, did he have me scared in this match, for sure. First rip off the Betty, he finds Karasu. He went uh, first, I believe. So, yep, we go second. And I gotta say, this matchup was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing with uh, the opponent that I played against. He rarely shows up to events, so it's always a blast getting to see him and getting to see what he cooks up with this Betty deck. So our first turn, we didn't really do anything. We don't really have a first turn play. I have been th thinking about throwing in uh, Spandams to find Soap Sheep and Rob Lucci, but it's just hard to put Searchers in a deck that has three different st uh, archetypes in it. And it has been running smooth enough without the searchers, so we haven't really needed it. So here, I'm thinking about just dropping Kobe and blowing up the Morley, and then swinging for 7, if I'm correct. Which is, it seems like that's the play. Yeah, getting rid of that Morley early, very, very good. Because Morley just punches through our Sabos and all that other stuff. No, my favorite thing to do in this deck is kind of combo off with Rebecca and Lucci in the late game. If I can like get a 10 cost Kuzan into play and then on another 10 on turn go, you know, like Ice Age or double um, Soap Sheeps, being able to then play Rebecca and Rob Lucci, getting a Kobe from the bin and essentially popping three things and then swinging for eight with lead. It's a very, very good turn. So our opponent here got a trigger. They triggered out, uh, it looks like uh, Kuma, and now they play an Ivankov leader ability. Now Ivankov ability, putting out the Karazu. I was already ready for that, <laughs> had my dice ready. And we're scared now. This is a fat board, and we're going to take a lot of damage here. So we've got to do a lot of calculations here to see how many swings we can take, how many we have to counter out of, because we do have Lucci in hand. So we're just doing a little math here, deciding if we can take this first one, and we can. We decide to take the second one, too because we do realize that there is still a 6k swing coming in and we can pitch Toshigi to this one to be able to bring it back later with Rebecca or you know just throw it back in the deck with Rob Lucci. It depends on what we top deck here. I'm thinking about playing Toy Soldier into the Rob Lucci this next turn. And I forgot that I was sitting at 4k, so I did have to pitch another card because I already committed to countering. So instead of just taking the life and losing the one card, I just pitched one more card there, giving us you know access to leaving either Manchuri or the Toshigi in the uh, trash for when we play the Rob Lucci. But I think my play here is just play Toy Soldier minus the Karasu. And then... Play Rob Lucci, blowing up Kuma and Karasu, and then swinging Kobe into Betty, and then leader into life. And I think that's our board killer turn. We leave him with the Ivankov, but at least he's got three cards in hand, and we can the board. We get the board clear here. I don't know why we take why we were thinking about taking the Suru route. You just want to keep Suru for later. It's just the cheapest one to play in the late game so you should just take advantage of your gun while you can and use all of it especially in this deck because of your leader ability so we make the cross through minus three by trashing the toy soldier and then we play out the rob lucci and i believe we blow up the cross and the kuma and then i have to put three to the bottom so i'm pretty sure i put manchuri um, yeah, the, th the three things that I don't really get much value out of Rebecca later are the ones that I decide to pit or to put back to the bottom because Rebecca can play both the ones in trash just to give that extra minus effect. 
and I almost was not smart. I decided to swing four into the Betty, knowing that he wouldn't save it, and now I get an 8k swing in the lead. No trigger, thank god. <laughs> that would have been brutal. That would have been absolutely brutal. So our opponent is now, I believe, on 7 Don turn, so this could get scary. They do have 5 cards in hand now since they didn't take trigger, or since they uh, didn't get a trigger. So they're back up in card size a little bit. They went from 3 to 5. It's a little sketch since we have 3 in hand. So they play out Blocker Sanji. And that was a little scary, but being a removal deck, as long as it's something that's not like Lindbergh or um, another Morley or another Karasu, I think we're okay. But our opponent just puts two Don onto Ivankov and puts out a, a Lindbergh, and that's what we were scared of. My opponent's just explaining to me that... Uh, or he was he he had said leader or he had said uh, Betty ability when he said Ivan when he meant to put uh, the Lindbergh into play. So I was just clarifying that he was doing it off of the Ivan Cobb ability and not using leader ability because he had said leader ability. So I was just clarifying to make sure that nothing was buffed for the turn, you know, because that would have been an, a crazy Ivan Cobb swing for sure. And a nice little 10k Ivankov swing. That might have been good for him to do. And just say, you know, let the Ivankov go. But ha had playing Betty in the past, you don't really want to lose your dudes until you can go for game. So, I think we play out Sabo. And unfortunately, we were stuck doing it this way. I know it would be, it's always better to play Sabo as the last card. But in order to find what I was looking for, I needed to um, I needed to dig with the Sabo. So I had to do things a little backward, leaving my next couple cards I'm playing um, more vulnerable, I guess you should say. We just follow up with a Fuguro. I forgot about that one. Yeah, so then, then the Sabo play was okay. Because we found the Kobe that we wanted to pitch for the Rebecca that we wanted to find later. There was no need to ha keep the Kobe in hand. I, I just wanted like two unkoable things because he's got the Lindbergh in play. So I think this was a perfect play into the Lindbergh. And we don't have the Rebecca, but I'm hoping that maybe we just top deck it soon and we can then start popping things in play because he's got... I, um, Kobe pops the Lindbergh right off the bat, I believe. No, Lindbergh's four, so I do have to find a minus effect. But I believe I have a Suru in hand, so I can give something minus two. So my idea is find Rebecca, play Suru and Rebecca in one turn to be able to Kobe the blocker and just go for it. And I think that's, like, our game plan here. So he decides to play 200 million volt Anmaru on Ivankov and rest whatever he wants outside of Sabo. Chooses to uh, rest the Fukuro. So this is telling me that he's going to try to go for game this turn if he's doing that. And he gets another Karasu. How wonderful. So he goes ahead and minus one to the lead. And this is going to be scary now. Because he's still got seven Don to work with. And a leader ability he can trigger off. And we've got a lot of dudes that can just come super heavy into us. And he adds another body to play in their, the Betty's Rush character. So now he's got a 7, an 8, and an 8. And he didn't have another dice, so I lent him one of mine. So now I have three or uh, a 7, two 8s, or three 8s coming in. So, and then a 9 from Lee. So this is this is crazy. So I think he's actually just gonna go uh, four eight or five eights. And he 
can't KO anything with the Lindbergh because both my things, or my thing he could KO right now, is unkoable. So I, I, I was like a little sketched on how I decided to take it here because I know he's got two swings left and he could have another Inazuma to come in for five, or for four to finish it off. But he's got one card in hand. Our last card is Soap Sheep, so we make him discard that card to make sure it's nothing crazy like an Inazuma, which was gasoline. And now if he comes in with eight, we can... Yeah, he's swinging with eight and we just counter out for nine. That's all the cards in our hand though, unfortunately, but we can just go for game next turn because he did have to attack with the Sanji. Block with Sabo. And now all we have to do is just go 10 with uh, Rob Lucci and the rest on leader and say GG's. But this game was crazy. It was so back and forth. Uh, we were able to stabilize pretty well and counter out properly. So yeah, we just go 10, and then I believe it's just 11 with lead, and we say GG's. We'll see you guys next time.